they wanted to jump into the mob, give the mob a megaphone so that they could attack this boy because he was white, he was Catholic, and he was wearing a Make America Great Again cap. If Nicholas had not purchased that souvenir cap that day at the mall, if he was not wearing it, none of us would know who Nicholas Sandman is. Well, there's Lynn Wood there, co-counsel to Nick Salmon, who's suing the Washington Post for defamation. His lawyers call the coverage a modern form of McCarthyism, say they ignored basic journalistic standards to advance an agenda against the president. Todd McMurtry is also part of the legal team with me now out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And Todd, thank you for your time and good morning to you. I, I saw a comment that said it's not about the money, although it's a lot of money, $250 million. It's about the message. What is the message here, Todd? Well, the message is, a, is very important, Don, and that is that we cannot tolerate a media establishment that goes after minors, 16-year-old boys, and completely destroys their reputation and then says that's okay and moves on to the next story. It's totally unacceptable. Okay, now, the Post has vast financial resources, and I mentioned the sum you're looking for, right? $50 million compensatory, $200 million punitive. Is it about the money and not the message? Well, the money is certainly the message, and so uh, those are intertwined very carefully. And in this circumstance, we have a new you know, type of damages, and those are perpetual reputational damages. Other commentators have sought to say that our damages are too high, but when you think about that those damages never go away and live on the Internet forever, I think they're appropriate in this circumstance. Here's what the Washington Post says, statement, and we're reviewing a copy of the lawsuit. It's only one line, and we plan to mount a vigorous defense. Don't you have to prove malice? And if so, how do you do that, Todd? Uh, Bill, I do not think we have to prove malice, but even if we had to, we would be able to do that. First, Nick Sandman is a private individual, so we only have to prove negligence. However, if a ruling were to be different and they were to consider him an involuntary public figure and we had to prove malice, we would be able to do that because the Washington Post is a weaponized news outlet that used its power and strength to destroy Nick Salmon's reputation, and they did that without adequate and appropriate levels of journalistic integrity and reporting, and that in itself is malicious. Okay. So I feel comfortable okay. with either standard. Uh, a couple more quick questions. I want to play a little bit of what we were picking up okay. back in the day, as I'm, I'm sure you're quite familiar. Kentucky law says the paper is allowed to retract an issue apology, retract a story within 10 days. If that is the case, does that make your lawsuit moot? Well, I don't think that the Washington Post can ever adequately retract because of this concept of uh, perpetual reputational damages. They can try, and they do have 10 days to do that, but ultimately uh, the jury will decide whether the retraction is adequate. So they have a, a mountain of retraction to try to put forth so to, it's uh, a degree to do or it effectively. It's a measure of the retraction. That's what I'm hearing from you. Is that right? That's right. If, if, you, if you destroy somebody's reputation on the front page, you can't go to the, to the B section and put it on the back page and say, we're sorry. Okay, so the Archdiocese apologized. Does that make their, do you drop the case against them or not? No. I mean, the Diocese of Covington uh, squeezed a, a half apology midway into a paragraph. Uh, that apology is not at all uh, related or the sim similar in size to the damage that their statement did. The Diocese of Covington statement was used nationally and internationally as a truthful statement. And the person who makes, who repeats that statement and the person who makes the statement are both liable. So the Diocese of Covington put that statement out there and did a lot so of damage to Nick's reputation, and that retraction on. is inadequate. I, I apologize for interrupting you. Yes. That, they are still on the list then, correct? That's okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, there is a list, I think, of 51 different media entities and individuals. This is just a sample of what was going down in mid-January around this case. Watch here. They're all jeering and they're dancing. He's got the smug look on his face, and that's not like everyone that sees that smug look wants to punch that kid. That young man there does not look like someone who is appreciative and considerate of, of this culture and this chant going on. I blame that kid. What a little <laughs> Okay, none of it is great in reflection here. Is Trevor Noah on your list? Is CNN on your list? Is Bill Maher on your list, sir? Well, certainly CNN and Bill Maher did things that we consider to have crossed the line. We think that the statements they made are defamatory. They're not humorous. 
And uh, so certainly Bill Maher is somebody that we are looking at very carefully and HBO for allowing him to uh, make those defamatory statements. Okay, but uh, not, CNN not, also. Uh, not Trevor ahead. Noah, correct? I want to be clear on this. I, I am honestly not familiar enough with what Trevor Noah said. The one who said, punch that kid? No, that person is most definitely on the list. Okay, so who is next then? If the Washington Post was lined up first, sir, who do you go after next? Uh, we have not decided uh, whom we will sue next. However, we're discussing that, and these lawsuits will continue to roll out over the next 30 to 60 days. Todd McMurtry, thank you, sir, for your time out of Cincinnati, Ohio, just yes. across the river there from Covington, Kentucky, in the home of Covington Catholic. Thank you, sir. We'll follow it.